Thank you, Carla. Um, there's some seats, actually, if you guys want to grab them. I will pause and let you grab them. Oh, while, while you're grabbing seats, um, I'll also say that uh, <clears throat> I'm, um, part of my involvement is this is because I'm the a writer in residence at the University of Calgary and also because uh, Kathleen Brown and I um, have been busy at work these past few months co-editing an issue of Dandelion Magazine called The Mapping Issue which will be coming out this spring so I encourage you to check that out because it's going to be more of a book actually than a magazine. It's going to be thick. Lots of work in it. All right, we're all sitting. Because translation performs the in-between, Lynn Hyginian disturbs our sense of boundaries. Because translation is collaboration, there is Xenia by Russian poet Arkady Dragomoshenko, and Sight with Leslie Scalapino. Because language is the history that gave her shape and hypochondria, Lynn Hyginian inquired Probe the fissures and cracks between words, where thought is but a potential, where we shape as we are in turn shaped, worded. So she asked, what is the language of inquiry? Then mythology gave way to history, and now history is going the way of fairy tales. And so we have the many lives of my life by Lynn Hyginian. This is writing at its most generous, the word opens and keeps opening, since to some extent each sentence has to be the whole story. And since memory is a fracture that we must keep inventing. As for we who love to be astonished, this is also writing as translation, traversal, transference, trespass, where only fragments are accurate. Because both subjectivity and objectivity are outdated filing system, Lynn Hyginian composes through the music of John Zorn, experiments with documents in a film directed by Jackie Oates. Because translation is not accurate, for we who love to be astonished, the work of Lynn Hyginian accurately beckons and keeps beckoning. Divided by the sun, it can hardly rise. The body is dead, but its skin is hypersensitive. It contains person already, with permission or not. Details emerge forever. Science. Science, somnambulance, and narcolepsy. Walking on all fours and wondering what one can't do. Wanting to part, fully relaxed with nothing. If pain, then time, then story, then moral. But someone else maintains the moral. Moral, 
Isn't it true that no act can have a name which can be said to represent it, since a name, to be of any use at all, must remain constant, while every action is both practically and perceptually inconstant, changing from one moment to the next? There, so it is. There, just that. In time, I've loved there. No other but one and other, no other, there. Better by day, by night, that too, carrying the body, the flamboyance, brain, there. A falling equestrian dressed in silk and sailing since this, there, when declared near, just that, in a moment, dear, there. No further, but an extra, nothing new, rare, recovered once by dark that hauls again, there, Air, ropes, cups, there, a dwindling likeness, scent and bare, seafaring sense. This, at the merest hint, taken, racing ahead to a figure aboard an annoying foible. There, as if to distribute pink or red, equally black, to the rescue at a rock's pace. There, for a figure, moving lips the wrong way, weight tipping, impending, the whole meditation waiting. There. Let's speak of the unconscious, and do so consciously. We've all got our nocturnal strictures, our fears. Wheels of green like radiant gravestones lean on my field of vision. Those fears want to be intelligible. Those wheels are seeking names. They imagine things. There are sheets of water no deeper than a shadow, beetles in a jug of milk, a clotted spider web, a mountain approaching my boat. Everything I think is wheeled by my thinking it. I watch the wobbling horizon from my unpremeditated circle. Words are a way to keep and to keep rolling. The purple night, the building clouds, the point of time. How should I interrupt the building clouds? Dreams surround intelligibility. The will digresses. It maintains its stupendous solitude, its cumulative inaction. The dog joined in and tore off the whole of the man's face, while the man, his arms clasping it, broke every bone in the dog's body. And there the pair of them lay, near death, each having seized what seemed to be its only chance. I've reported nearly all that I've learned as long as I was reporting it. Once it reached a ditch. Another time, light through small holes ran clear through it. I thought I had a toothache. Now people work harder than ever and the rents go up. People listen to music powerful enough to shatter stone, but it falls silent. People, ah, to have students, to pass on all that I've learned. But they need to invent add color, replace the lights. We should stop here and defer still, differ stiff, differentiate stiffly, defecate, stay. <laughs>
staring us in the face, starting at age five, which is still a little early, but who could know if we managed the transition? Boy couldn't exactly say without girl, but we never set out to be stupid or lazy, and we aren't lazy or stupid yet. Constant change figures the time we sense, passing on its effect, surpassing things we've known before, since memory of many things is called experience. But what of what we call nature's picture, of the many things we, we call, since memory, we call nature's picture, surpassing things we've known before, constant change figures, experience passing on its effect. But what of what constant change figures, since memory of many things is called the time we sense, called nature's picture. But what of what in the time we sense, surpassing things we've known before, passing on its effect, is experience. The measures of the night require no space. The, the registers, the most sundry, the spectators who, the, the repeaters, vague leaders, weaves the left, the leaves. A dream still clinging like light to the dark, rounding the gap left by things which have already happened, leaving nothing in their place, may have nothing to do but that. Dreams are like ghosts, achieving ghosts' perennial goal of revoking the sensation of repose. It's terrible to think we write these things for them, to tell them of our life that is our whole life. Along comes a dream of a machine. Why? What is being sold here? How is the product emitted? It must have been sparked by a noise, the way the very word spark emits a brief picture. Is it original, inevitable? We seem to sleep so as to draw the picture of events that have already happened so we can picture them. A dream, for example, of a procession to an execution site. How many strangers would circle the space while speaking of nostalgia and of wolves in the hills? We find them thinking of nothing instead. There's no one to impersonate, nothing to foresee. It's logical that prophecies should be emitted through the gaps left by previous things or by the dead, refusing conversation and contemplating beauty instead. But isn't that the problem with beauty? That it's apt in a re retrospect to seem ordained? The dawn birds are trilling a new day. It has the psychical quality of pastness and they are trailing it. The day breaks in, in, in an imperfectly continuous course of life. Sleep is immediate and memory nothing. A woman leans over to paint blue curves between her legs. She will leave them there for a week to test the erotic potential of a particular tattoo she is considering a freeform tattoo of intersecting lines in closing spaces that can be colored in differently every day. She imagines the ritual of choosing the colors and applying them. Isn't it always the task of history to show us something that has been of what has been previously concealed in a hidden space? From sleep, it's getting the elements I want. Those not hairy, not unclaimed, not steam, not moderation. They minutely vary and stay the same. From waking, I know that common names for a wind are echo, engine, and shadow. Memory is plasticine, farming protein, forgotten and free. I have a board from a cave. It's the one with which I roofed it a bluish-gray but rosy and owlish adamant board, now a walkway. So off we go. No mention of mention, but much of prediction and of musical time in wakefulness echoing. Musical time goes on. Sleep goes on what? On horses, buses, and beetle chat. Surely the 
sea, for the deer browsing on the bluffs overlooking it belongs with the sky in the background of their beliefs, should they have them. But for us to drift below with binoculars, we seem to draw it near. And as nine pelicans fly low over the cast surface north of the earth, on which we're picnicking after wandering through the fog, I remember the zoo with its meandering veterinarian. Among the dreamy elephants, they won't charge, don't we wish? Swinging their trunks and the humidity in the monkey house, while we live, we can notice such things, not always to remember them well, gray and swaying, just as some people jiggle their feet or twirl locks of their hair or toss in bed to alleviate anxiety in ever smaller increments, to repeat patterns over time, to cover time and again repeat, just as a person might, just as a person might, working like crazy, day and night, to cover the possibility that she isn't real and won't get this work whose rules keep changing done without circumambulating the table on which it sits, prowling in the purportedly relaxed but actually predatory manner assumed by cats with intellectual momentum and psychological twists that could be interpreted as prophetic in retrospect far off and still to come in the future towards which we're traveling faster and faster in black, then day, again night, again day, again night, the flapping of a black wing, gaining velocity behind the jerking sun, a streak of fire, the moon, a fainter, fluctuating band over trees that grow, spread, shiver, and collapse, mistily and dustily, without a trace. To my disappointment, I try to catch or create it. But everything's gone, whole histories, like dreams, sink into nothingness under my eyes. There is a bakery. Wow, if I hurry, I can get rye bread and a dozen macaroons and a blanket in Denmark from a peasant painted by Pizarro who nursed the infant Kierkegaard at her good breast, which she cupped in her strong pink, green-veined, purple-shadowed, haystack yellow hand and hitched when he was done, then stuffed back where it belonged without doing any good or harm to her sense of justice, poised on canvas, spread to the wind. Flagellate, gnomes in blue panties. Hey sister, don't squeeze. Potential spinach lover, lacrimose concert goer. I like to stamp on corrugations. I've got to list that gum eraser. Wild are the wildebeests, rapacious the masked raccoons that prowl at night. Finish the list, patrol. Gigantism, existence in space, quick claim, humdinger, punk, buckwheat, individual volition, rub me with rose water, cast pearls before swine, get up steam, adieu, lambent flame of genius, fiddle v d spatula, rage, breathe, lovesick turtle doves, bartending tiger, unthreaded abigail, representative negative woodblock titian seascape, sink of sun, noontide, shut up, waters of bitterness come down the river, spaniel servility, pinned braggadocio, fiery, pot wallaby, post-feminist biker chick, solicitude, fribble, inquiry, napkin and bushel and manana, give me a break, authenticity, judge, stammer, so please you. Some are nights in which I'm told. Rain, queen. I'd attribute it entirely to the cattle, self-sufficient solar calm, from which nothing more was to be learned in a bright place, belly by shade, one hemisphere with the other implied, where they might be twins so gentle together, nothing more to be learned, since one can't be governed by superstitions, and omens are too incompletely in informative. I want to sleep in a pink hat, 
Kelly. Start over. I went to sleep in a pink hat. <laughs> and when I awoke, I was sucking my gums. I telephoned my friend who lives in a crater, and when she spoke, I answered. I took out a loan as if it were a cow that I was moving to hire a pasture. And when winter came, I climbed a pine tree. Thank you.